Good morning, Revolution, and welcome to this week. Hello, everybody out there in Facebook land and YouTube land and whatever land you're in. <laughs> I know we've got an international audience, too, so welcome to this week. Uh, Rosanna, good morning. How are good you? Good morning. Good morning, Revolution. I'm good. Great, great. And Anita in the great morning. state of Ohio. Morning, Revolution from Ohio. You notice I always say great state and Scott from the great state of, uh, what are you, a New Yorker state? Or, uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in New York state. Yeah. New York state, uh, great, good morning. And Michael, Michael uh, Lynch from, uh, he's from many different parts. We're going to claim him as a buzz out this morning. Hello, Michael. Good morning. Good morning, Revolution. So we've had one hell of a week. Uh, there is a not so slow moving assault on democracy. I mean, it is, people keep talking about, oh, Trump is mad, oh, he's depressed, oh, we got to give him time to sort it all out. No, there is a direct, conscious, premeditated assault on the democratic uh, foundations, bourgeois democratic foundations of this republic. It is being planned by the all right, by Bannon and Breitbart and finance capital to Mercer. Giuliani is coordinating it along and they're, 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 they're even directing Trump and it's all planned and premeditated. Anita, yes. I mean, do you agree or disagree? I agree. I'm really coming over to your point of view on this. I think assault on democracy is exactly what it is. I don't think it's going to succeed, actually. I don't think Trump is going to succeed. But I've heard the argument that he's laying the path for future people to di dispute elections. And if it was were a closer election, he could have, um, I think he would have a, had a chance to steal it. But I don't, I still am optimistic in that I don't think it's going to succeed. I think it, like Biden's advisors say, it might mean the death of a lot of people from COVID that didn't have to die because he's delaying the transition process. But, and it is an assault on democracy that really bodes ill for the future. 80 million votes, Rosanna. Is it that many for, for the democratic forces? And now Trump has 73 million. Do I have my math right, Rosanna? Uh, I, I believe so. You know, I, I think that that um, they're setting up Biden to fail. Remember, there's going to mm. be another election in two years. So they're setting him up to fail. And we we have to keep reminding the American people of all of these things that are going on right now that are setting him up to fail. Just like we needed to remind American people about the, the Biden, the Obama years. It's not all about, you know, Obama's failure on these things. It was all the other situations that were going on that kept him from doing the things that he said. So I think that we need to, you know, stay afloat on that, on that aspect. Good point. One of, one of them was that Mitch McConnell said, oh, hell no. Forget about it. We're not giving you anything. You're going to be a one-term president. Mm -hmm. You want to think you can run the United States. We'll show you who runs the United States. That's what they were saying, Scott. But there might be, Scott, a black swan event between now and, I like that term, you know, I think it's kind of, you black know, swan. cool, black swan event. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that mean, Scott? And do you think that there's going to be one and uh, between now and election day? You know, I, I don't, I, it's, it's hard to say. It, it seems like what, what Trump and Giuliani and Bannon and everyone are, are, are banking on. Like, none of these challenges are, are working in the courts. And frankly, a lot of them are ridiculous in terms of the arguments they're presenting. Um, and it, it seems like they're trying to just buy time for some, hopefully something in their, in terms of their hopes, that, that something will happen. Um, Wait a minute, do be... you think that Lindsey Graham was buying time in Georgia when he called up the Secretary of State and told him to throw out votes? No, obviously, but I, I was talking more about the legal challenges that-, that ah, um, I see. Uh, the, I mean, their appearances in court are uniformly ridiculous. They're, the, they have no, they can't even allege fraud because that requires you to produce evidence, right? Um, so I think they're, they're just in a kind of, they're doing what they're, they're, they're casting around everywhere, trying to do something, waiting to, waiting for something to pop off that they can take advantage of. But I really, I hate this idea that 
you know, we just need to give Trump some time, right? Give him some time to, to cool down and just, you know, make his peace with me. Because it, that's like, people, unemployment is going to expire um, for a lot of people at the end of December. Not, not the supplement, but even basic unemployment benefits. Mm-hmm. And um, evictions are going to start and pe- we're, in a, we're in a crisis. And people have already waited long enough. They've already given this administration way more time than, than could be justified. We need action on this. So I, what I'm asking isn't, is, you know, yes, they're setting up Biden to fail. Um, what I want to know is how is Biden um, setting himself up for success on this program of the needs of the people? What, you know, what steps is he ready to take right, you know, on day one uh, to start remedying this? So Michael, uh, I want to know what steps uh... He's your president. You you voted for him. Uh, uh, you you've been Biden, Biden, Biden. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> you know. Um, so what steps do you think he should take, or is that really the question, Michael? I think it should be what steps are we going to push him to take? Because I don't think mm. it's up to him as an individual. Um, I don't even think it's up to all of Congress, which, you know, it's, it's widely, they're widely going to depend on what happens in Georgia on the 5th. But I think it's really going to depend on these 80 million people who went out and voted for Biden Harris and, you know, the Democratic ticket. What are we going to do to push them? You know, they promised student debt forgiveness, right? That's a big thing during a pandemic and economic crisis. Uh, they promised uh, going back, you know, and doing uh, the Paris Climate uh, Accords, you know, and, and parts of the new, a Green New Deal. They say they agree with parts of the Green New Deal. So what does that mean, right? Um, going back to Obama era policy towards Cuba. And Kamala Harris even said a really progress, she made a progressive statement towards um, the Palestinians. Uh, which appeared in the Jerusalem Post, you know, which is kind of like a progressive uh, publication in, in, in Jerusalem. And so I think, you know, those things, we have to push them on those things. I don't think it's up to them. We can't just rely on two people to run the show. That's not how this bourgeois democracy works. And so I think we have to stay mobilized uh, first to get Trump out, because I think, you know, as Rosanna has been saying for the past few weeks, he's not going to go easily. He's going to go kicking and screaming and, you know, without these evidence of, of fraud and such. But we have to keep that, you know, momentum going. We have to be ready to protest whenever there's um, another uh, a killing by a racist police officer or a shooting at a synagogue. Uh, that's what I'm most worried about. I'm not, I, I agree with Anita that I don't think it's, he's going to be able to pull off this coup. Uh, but I do fear, you know, the, the 73 million people who voted for him, not all of them, but, you know, the, the extreme alt-right uh, handful of them who, you know, would pick up a gun and would go to a synagogue. You know, I think we have to be ready uh, to resist that and, 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 and be prepared for that. But how can we push them if the working class is divided? And God damn it, the working class is divided. There's no way of getting around it. I mean, uh, you know, 57% union members voted for in Ohio, 51% in Pennsylvania. But in Wisconsin, it was different. I heard it was almost the opposite, you know, in, in, in Wisconsin. And in Michigan, it was better. And, and Rosanna, in, in California, the labor movement came out strong for democracy. Am I wrong? No, you're right. The labor movement did come out strong. You know, there was not just campaigning in, within the state, but uh, there was a lot of campaigning outside of the state. A lot of the focus was in campaigning outside of the state. But I think we need to keep pointing out that people have the power. Working people have the power to bring about change. And some of this unity will come about just by having a president that is not spewing hate but spewing some kind of unity, spewing some type of hope. And, and those of us who are, who are active already need to reach out to our brothers and sisters who have been under this toxic, uh, uh, what, uh, what is it, hoax? Or no, what is that called? Uh, hoax is a good word. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, on, that, on that question of unity though, I think we have to, I think we have to distinguish, right? Because, um, uh, there are different kinds. You know, Biden's been talking about, oh, I, you know, I want, we need unity. We need to move past this. We need to come together as a nation. Um, so but what's that gonna be? Is it gonna be 
a unity around, you know, based around the needs of, of working people and the needs of the people broadly, or a, a unity on the issues actually facing the American people, or is it going to be um, what it's often been, unity as an excuse for um, seeking compromise with the right rather than, you know, pursuing the, the, the struggle against them? Is it going to be unity between the two sides of the capitalist class around their interests? Um, you know, well, that's what we have to be much, much more mindful about what kind of unity we're going to be pushing for, you know, within our grassroots struggles that or, or movements that we're involved in. It's, you know, and, and so far what I hear is people talking about unity on meeting the needs of the most impacted uh, group of people here in the United States, the homeless, those whose, whose uh, uh, unemployment is going to be running out, those lines of, you know, endless lines of food, you know, uh, th that you see on television, it's pushing for those types of, uh, you, that, that kind of unity lets unite to get us all out of poverty. Good point, and part of the big problem in this election was, you know, cross-class unity around the issue of race and racism. And um, I mean, why did people vote for Trump? Because there was a perception that the country is going to become a majority people of color country in 20, what is it, 2050 or something like that? I mean, or, or uh, what was it that motivated? People say, well, Trump stood for jobs and Biden was in favor of exporting capital, exporting jobs out of the country. I mean, um, and so you got to grapple. And then they started blaming losses in Ohio on Black Lives Matter. Yeah. No. Oh, it's the defund the police is the problem. Oh, AOC, stop talking about socialism. No. Stop talking about Medicare for all. <clears throat> I can't unite with that. Mm. Who on this except program that, wants to unite with that? Except that, that every every progressive uh, candidate, every candidate that came out for Medicare for all, even in, in swing districts, won. <laughs> right, and the, this issue, I was talking with a trade union leader the other night. He said, look, stop blaming the workers. Stop blaming the workers for the fault of the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is, is the problem. They, they, they didn't convince people to vote for them in right. Ohio, Anita. Yeah, they also, I mean, uh, it, the exit polls also show that the people who have the highest income voted in the highest numbers for Trump too. And I think as far as unity is concerned, Biden does and the union vote, especially Biden does have the most progressive union labor union um, program or plan strategies that uh, of any candidate ever. And I think that might be uh, the way to bring uh, those workers uh, or those union members and union households uh, back to the Democratic Party where they were uh, previously. Um, so I, I think there's there's some hope um, there and also Trump and the Republicans increased the electorate, the size of the electorate by quite a bit in Ohio. And I think they increased it among um, non so-called non-college uh, educated uh, white voters. Um, and I think with the right strategies and the right um, message, we can show them the unity that they, uh, the, the benefits of unity with the rest of the working class. So I have, I have hopes that that kind of unity is possible in the future. Maybe against- Is that a Marxist concept, Anita? <laughs> Non-college educated white voters. Is that a Marxist category? No, it isn't a Marxist category. I know I, I do tend to slip into those sociology you know, words, but um, it's, a, it's a way that the electorate was sliced and diced and compared with each other. And apparently you can predict better uh, you know, who a person is going to vote for by X number of characteristics. And that happened to be one that was a fault line. And, um, and, and maybe, I mean, it, I think it is a fault line in, in the electorate. It was a, was a, a source of division. And therefore, we, we have to address it. We have to recognize why is that? And what was Trump, 
Trump's message to non, uh, you know, to, to um, maybe non-college educated voters to use a non-Marxist non category, but what was it that appealed to them? And then we can turn it around. Okay. okay. Well, another part of this, oh, on a, oh, sorry, Joe, go for it. No, go on. Say what you uh, say so what's on your another, mind. Uh, another part of this is um, on a, a kind of bigger picture level. Um, we're in a period when, when class consciousness is growing as a result of the crisis, uh, right? That just, it, it happens. People are coming to see the, the uh, shortfalls of capitalism, the, the contradictions, but that development of class consciousness is not happening in um, a kind of free and open way. It's happening in an atmosphere that's kind of saturated or hemmed in or whatever by, by white supremacy and by male supremacy and by um, national chauvinism and all these other sort of oppressive systems so that when class consciousness is trying to develop you know, within that system, it gets twisted and distorted around kind of the contours of those other things. So, so part of it is, I mean, th there really is an imperative to win um, white workers into struggles alongside um, uh, um, workers of color and, and to start building the unity there. It's, I don't think it's we can get around It's a very complicated that. picture though, Scott, because you know, part of the problem is that the country is so big, it's, it's very mixed what's going mm -hmm. on. I mean, Rosanna in Los Angeles and in California, you have a very active labor movement, I hear, and very in, engaged, and the percentage of workers who are in unions are higher than in Mahoning and Trumbo County and Lorain County, where I'm from, in Ohio, where the unions have been decimated. They've been destroyed. And so how do you organize them if you don't have unions? And, well, I mean, and, and the racial and gender composition of organized labor is different there as well, right? But I think right. you, you were about to say something? I, I think you form other modes of fight back, you know, like the unemployed councils. Uh, you form other, other fight backs depending on the issue. You could, uh, you know, if there's issues with schools or there's issues with whatever, um, even in your immediate community of, uh, you know, people killing each other, those types of things, you, you form a fight back, a social movement that, that unites the community and gives people hope of, a, you know, that there is a fighting chance. And that's what brings people out to, you know, off, off of their sofa and, and, and into action is that hope. And so I think that those are other ways that we can do that. And you That's know, for people's concept. campaign is 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 really a, a, a model for that. Poor people's campaign is talking about bringing everybody out of poverty. That you know just addresses a, a whole bunch of people from all walks of life, and 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 even all different from in, brings in the different movements into one united fight. I think we're going to have to devote a whole program to that issue, Rosanna, next week. What are the new forms and old forms of struggle uh, that, that can be utilized on the ground, in the neighborhood, in the workplaces, um, particularly in, in, in those areas where the trade union movement has been decimated, like in Western Pennsylvania, Northeastern Ohio, uh, and so on and so forth, uh, Michigan, Wisconsin. Wisconsin, they, they did a great job, so I hear. And then Georgia, they did a great job bringing new voters into the process. And they didn't rely on the Democratic Party machine. They didn't rely on them. They, 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 they created independent organizations that did voter registration, that did voter mobilization, that included the churches and the civic associations and the unions where they existed and grassroots activities. And oh my goodness, uh, uh, Trump got his butt whooped two times in Georgia in the vote count, mm -hmm. two times. Maybe he is depressed, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I got my butt whooped two times 
I would be depressed. I would just go on back to Florida or wherever he's go back to the rock that you came out of and leave us the hell alone. The difference, Joe, know. is that you're not evil. He's very evil. <laughs> I don't know if evil gets depressed or just gets even. <laughs> yeah, how about that's a, that's a good question, too. That's a good question. Well, I think that just, that just about does it. We want to invite all of our viewers to join the Communist Party. Go to cpusa.org. Sign up today. Uh, it's, a, it's a people are drawing deeper conclusions, and we have a membership drive. And you're, you're welcome to uh, join us. Go, just go to, you can type in cpusa.org backslash join backslash, and you can join, or you can go to our website, hit the join button, come on inside, help us build the revolutionary movement for a new socialist tomorrow. That's what Langston News was talking about everybody when he said good morning re revolution and we are in the morning of a new period with biden's defeat we're in the morning of a new epoch everybody and uh that's true you might not see it now but it's it's, it's really true you know i was in moscow once and i went and i'll end with this to a spring festival in the middle of january in this big yellow mansion that they had converted into something. And I was like, where's the spring? There was four feet of snow outside, but they understood that, you know, spring was coming just a few weeks away. It was inevitable, in fact, that it was coming. And this new period that we're in, it was inevitable too. I don't want to sound like a dogmatic Marxist, but it's true. The people can win victories and we want a big one. So thank you, everybody. See you next week. And Bye. Um, take care, everybody. Stay safe and stay strong. It's dangerous out there. Right. Yep. Physically uh, distant, but socially close. <laughs>